is an honor, Comrade Lennon. And your name? Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 worst post credit scenes. Thanks for meeting me, Doc. I've been reading about you. For this list, we'll be looking at bonus film content that went nowhere, wasn't worth the wait, or were just plain awful. We'll be getting into plot details, so consider this your spoiler warning. What's a post credit scene you regret waiting in the theater for? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Who's Zool? Ghostbusters. In the post credit scene for 2016's Ghostbusters, Patty and her team learn of an entity named Zool. What is it? Did you get something? Yeah, I heard something really weird. What's Zool? Seasoned fans recognize Zool as a villain from the original Ghostbusters and a recurring character of the franchise, but plans to follow up with him in a sequel were canned following the commercial failure of the movie. It was all one big lose-lose situation. I guess some people actually do know what we did. Well, that's not terrible. No, it's not. It's not terrible at all. Since audiences weren't enthusiastic about this universe, bringing Zool back here didn't feel like the right move. And the people who did like the film were robbed of seeing the villain in this continuity. At least Zool finally came back in Ghostbusters Afterlife. Um, I don't know. Mom, Phoebe, what's your job? Number 9. Powell's a Believer, K Pax. When Dr. Mark Powell's new patient, Prote, claims to be from another planet called K Pax, the psychiatrist tries to figure out if the guy's telling the truth or is out of his mind. A bit about your boyhood on K Pax. Where were you born? You were. Born. Right. By the end, it's heavily implied that Dr. Powell believes Prote's an alien. The ending does a nice job of subtly hinting at Powell's new belief, so why did we need the post credit scene that basically says the same thing again? The universe will expand, then it will collapse back on itself, then it will expand again. It will repeat this process forever. In the extra sequence, Powell stares into a telescope and then up to the stars, likely to see if he can find K Pax. Pretty repetitive since earlier in the movie we already got the idea that Pal is a believer. Maybe they just really wanted to show off the telescope. Every mistake you make, you will live through again and again forever. Number 8. Otway and the Wolf, The Grey. The Grey probably wanted to make a statement with its post credit scene, we just don't really know what it was. After their plane crashes, a group of oil workers hoping for a vacation become stranded in Alaska. So we don't die. We build up a fire. And we find food, and at daybreak, we figure out what way is south, and we start walking. Nobody's gonna find us. Not yet. But since being stuck in a frozen hell wasn't enough, they also get attacked by feral wolves. The closing moments feature a final standoff between an alpha wolf and the lone survivor, John Otway. Once more into the fray, to the last good fight I'll ever know. Live and die on this day. Who won? Well, a brief sequence after the credits roll shows the two laying next to each other. It's fine, but very ambiguous. Did they both die? Did they both survive? Did they need to shoot this at all? Do something! Come on! Prove it! Number 7. Out of Focus, Vice. This political biopic about Dick Cheney goes from being relatively grounded to completely meta with just one scene. After the movie ends, we cut to a focus group. Sorry to interrupt, but Mark wanted to share something with everyone. Something's been bothering me this whole movie, and I just figured it out. The whole thing's liberal. It's got a liberal bias. While we were introduced to them earlier, their focus has turned to talking about the actual movie. Wait, are we breaking the fourth wall? Maybe the director saw Deadpool. Fourth wall break inside a fourth wall break. That's like 16 walls. In any case, some political disagreements then quickly lead to a fight. Everything from the childish name calling to the fast and furious name drop feels out of place. In a weird way, this post credit scene is actually pretty unifying. Because regardless of how you felt about Cheney, all can agree that nobody wanted to hear the word lit in this film. I can't wait to see the new Fast and the Furious movie. That looks lit. Number 6. Henchmen get a video game deal. Super Mario Brothers. The obnoxious duo of Iggy and Spike popped up at several points in this loathed video game adaptation. Between us, Iggy doesn't have a brain in his head. I agree. Although they're initially dim-witted henchmen, they have their intelligence enhanced by a machine. But the boost in their smarts didn't make the characters any more entertaining to watch. Despite their lack of redeeming qualities, the movie chose to end on them. A retreat is in order. An ordered retreat. Those that fight and run away. I live to fight another day. 
After the credits roll, the two meet with businessmen in an apartment to strike up a video game deal. We get that the film wanted to poke fun at the Super Mario Bros. gaming franchise. However, ending an already rocky movie on two of its worst characters was not exactly the smartest decision. Iggy's World. The indomitable Spike. The Super Koopa Cousins! Number 5. More Aliens? Battleship. Remember when Hasbro tried to do a gritty live-action film about Hasbro's battleship? If you didn't, we don't blame you. It revolves around a small naval fleet having to take on warships commanded by invading aliens. Contact, 700 yards out. Summer camp. Champion. When I was 12. Are you kidding me? Here we go. This highly specific plot moved along so slowly that audiences got bored before the final battle got underway. However, the studio is still hoping there would be a sequel. This was evident by a post credit scene which introduced even more aliens during the sequence. Are you going to open it, Jimmy? Jimmy says he's getting none. He's getting none! Humans in Scotland discover an asteroid-like item has crash-landed in the country. All we see is an extraterrestrial hand before it cuts to black. Since the movie was such a flop, this alien will likely never pop up on anyone's radar. <laughs> Number 4. Skeletor Will Return – Masters of the Universe During the 1987 Masters of the Universe, Skeletor was defeated by He-Man, depowered and knocked into a pit. Drive your cursed face from my memory forever! Skeletor! Yes! Let this be our final battle! His death seemed all but certain, but in the post-credits, the villain actually survived. Skeletor's head rises up from the liquid he fell into and he promptly states, I'll be back. I'll be back! Besides ripping off Terminator, the freeze frame of Skeletor's face that audiences were forced to look at was both goofy and unsettling. While there's some cool versions of Skeletor out there, this was not one of them. We were glad this version didn't come back. However, this does mean that not only is Skeletor an evil warlord, but he's also a liar. Death and rebirth, and as you die, so will I be reborn. Number 3. Deadpool Lives, X-Men Origins Wolverine Although Deadpool is famous for his colorful get-up and quippy dialogue, he becomes a silent and generic-looking assassin by the end of the film. They even sewed his mouth shut. Wait, is that you? you striker finally figured out how to shut you up. After audiences trudged through the climax with the character, the movie threatened to give us more of him. Within a pile of rubble, a hand crawls over to Wade's head. Once his eyes open, he decides to shush the audience. This awful scene tried to salvage the mess of a character and also set up his future appearances. Thankfully, we never got anything else from this version of the character. Ryan Reynolds would go on to play a much better Deadpool while taking shots at the old one. Hey, it's me. Don't scratch. Just cleaning up the timelines. Number two, introducing Hitler, the King's Man. We're guessing audiences who stick around after a movie aren't expecting to see Adolf Hitler, but that's what they got in The King's Man. The movie spent the bulk of its runtime treating historical figures like over the top supervillains. That's what I like. Time to dance on your graves. After the movie ends, two of the film's remaining antagonists have a secret meeting in a shady location. Suddenly, they decide to bring a new person into the vault. The mystery ally that steps out of the shadows is none other than Adolf Hitler. And your name? Adolf Hitler. Although introducing him fit in with the movie's offbeat story, many felt that it was bizarre to see a notorious dictator get introduced like an MCU villain. The fact that Kingsman bombed at the box office made this odd introduction feel pointless. May our sons and friends rest in peace. And long live the Kingsman. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Intriguing? Morbius. 
Thanks to a wonky spell in Spider-Man No Way Home, the Vulture accidentally ends up in the world of Jared Leto's critically panned Morbius. While the multiverse jump could have been an interesting plot point, the flying villain doesn't arrive until the post credit sequence. The bizarre story developing at the Manhattan Detention Center when a man identifying himself as Adrian Toomes simply appeared in an otherwise empty cell. The infamous scene sees a very confused Vulture meeting with Morbius. For some reason, the bird-themed antagonist wants to form an alliance with the living vampire. There's zero explanation as to what the next steps of the Vulture's master plan are. Thanks for meeting me, Doc. I've been reading about you. I'm listening. I'm not sure how I got here. And none of the events of Spider-Man Homecoming or Morbius set up any character motivations to justify this team-up. This post credit scene ultimately felt like a confusing footnote to an already divisive movie. It has to do with Spider-Man, I think. I'm still figuring this place out, but I think a bunch of guys like us should team up. We could do some good. Intriguing. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.